a very outgoing, outspoken person, but I'm also very shy. I've been diagnosed with antidepressant at the um, so I had to go on antidepressant to help me cope with all that and I had to seek counseling and I hated it because it was reliving the moment every time that we went back to that moment. So I'd go into back into depression and couldn't and understand why I was having these bumps all over my body and then we found out it was stress. I was sexually assaulted by Ping Sergio and Seferino at Orange Glen Elementary. And they didn't do anything until my grandparents actually called the cops and then we pressed charges. And many years later down the road, I'm still that trusting individual who trusts people and I trust the wrong person. After all that happened in my early 20s, I was also sexually assaulted. So after the situation with me being sexually assaulted at Camp Mountain, um, I had to go through major therapy and I also also, uh, this is when I tried to kill myself is back after I had to go to court and I had to testify against the person that sexually assaulted me. So I had a lot of things going on at that time in my life that it was just a really big struggle that that's when I actually tried to commit suicide. It was because I was reliving my tragedy moment when my closest friend tried to kill me, he raped me, he bit me, and I had to have plastic surgery to fix the damage that he's done. So there is a lot of sorrow, pain, grief, and that's the reason why I'm so cut off. Theater Eagle is the person who sexually assaulted me when I was 23. He only got 18 months for the rape and five years for attempted murder and it, it's it's hard because people don't understand you know when they look at you, you know they say things are you going bald it's like no I don't have a bald spot it's a scar it's a nasty ass scar and <clears throat> it reminds me every time that someone asks me you know what happened there and it's like Oh, I was in a car accident, and it, the truth is no, I was thrown against a brick wall, and my head busted open. So yeah, that's why I have a scar there, and that's, you know, before I used to hide it very well with darker hair, but now I'm sort of going back to my natural color. But yeah, Matt knows all this. Matt uses it against me. And horrible way so I going back to my 20s when I had to go to court on my own because my family really did not support me in any of my this. family not supporting me also made me felt I was abandoned and that's when my big abandonment issues come in play my family also did not support me and I had to do all this on my own Chris my ex he did go to the court with me because he also had to testify on what happened it was very hard and the reason why I'm making this video is to also let young women know that it's time to stand up. I a women's group to help me get cope with, basically it's like um, nightmares and all something stress. So this is the reason why I'm telling you this is because Matt, my ex. And this is also how far Matt family. and I go back. He also knew my ex fiance, Brian. Used a lot of things against me, and it was abusive, toxic relationship. Um, both parts. Don't get me wrong. I wasn't Mrs. Innocent. So I learned how to manipulate, get my way, do certain things, treat him a little bit like shit. But I also knew that our relationship was over. It was going on, you know, four years, of off and on. <laughs> And it was just driving me nuts because we couldn't get it, this relationship. So it's, it's really hard not to know who I am and, and not to use things against me and not to use things against him. But he's done a lot of mean, cruel things like cheated on me and um, was seeing me as well as his ex-wife now. But before it was just, you know, he was seeing both of us and then he married her to get, you know, 
revenge on me. I mean, it was just nothing but toxic. Um, so yeah, he's out of my life. You know, it, it was hard and, um, <laughs> but I ended things right afterwards with Matt. Completely no contact, no nothing. And 2018 is when he stalked my phone completely and then even sent sex video of him and I to one of my co-workers that he thought I was having a relationship with. So yeah, he was an asshole. Then I knew something wasn't right with my emotions because I wasn't keeping in contact with him, but certain things were happening to my phone. I was getting all these weird things. It's still happening to my website, my Facebook, my Instagram. So I'd have to take it down, put it back up. and. It was just a nightmare and I couldn't figure out what was going on and I was freaking out. Well, I couldn't figure out why my text messages were all disappearing. I would see like Richard and then, you know, write him and then the next thing you know, it was gone. And then I'd write Teresa and then all my pictures and stuff that I sent her would go be disappear. And then Chris and then Dan and you know, they're like, did you get this text? No, I didn't. I would, I would freak out at work. I mean, freak out like going what is wrong with my phone you know i thought everybody was playing a game with me as well so it turned out they weren't taken into apple a couple times like there's nothing wrong with your phone you know you are getting messages and i was like oh my goodness you know and then i had family say that hey Kimberly, i think someone broke into your phone or your something's going on and then i started to do my own research and that's when I Turn found it, out. Reset it. I lost photos. I lost so many things on my phone. And then I would get these weird um, photos of myself. And I was like, going, what the fuck? You know, what? You know? So I said, you know, I went to AT&T. They looked it over again. Nothing wrong with it. We reset it. And I said, you know what? You, you maybe should go to Apple and see what they could do to help you. So I went to Apple. And this is when we're actually going through all my files on my phone. And he started to laugh. And I said, what's so funny? I felt like an idiot, you know, because I'm a tech, so I should know this shit, right? So I'm like, oh, what's so funny? And he's like, girl, he's like, you may be cute and you may be pretty, but you ain't smart. And I was like, oh, what the fuck, you know? <clears throat> as much as I wanted to stop the guy, I didn't do that. I was like, going, okay, go ahead. Tell me how stupid I am, right? He opened my, tapped the thing and it opened my file. And he goes, doop. Doop. And he goes, what's that? To make it easier to find when I'm going through my phone so it's more organized. Like all my photo things are photoed together because they're photos. So I keep everything filed together so it's easier for me to find. So I was like, okay. I'm like, it's by or something. And he's like, we need to delete the app, reset your phone, you know, go to make sure that it's completely deleted and go back in there and reset your phone. And I said, I go, first of all, what app is this? And he was like, somebody put this app on your phone and right now is seeing everything that is going on as if this person could go to each app on your phone and get into your Facebook, your Instagram. He goes, this person's really smart. It's for parents to check on their children. And I, sometimes it's really hard to remove, but he didn't put a password on it by clicking it. So he wasn't that smart. So he did it at a time that I was probably at his house. And I had to excuse myself and go to the restroom because I don't always like to take my phone into the restroom. Because I so I was in tears in the Apple store. Just tears is completely falling down because I felt that my privacy was taken from me. I felt betrayed. I felt very hurt and I didn't know what to do. So I called one of my exes, James. He's actually a sheriff um, deputy. And he goes, you need to take legal action. He goes, that's something very serious. And I said, I can't believe he did this to me. I, you know, and I'm still hurt by it because of all the things that he said and everything that he put me through. Oh, you 
you know, and I've forgiven him because I have to, because you have to be able to move on with your life. But he, he made me really suffer and downloaded them. So I had to make sure that they weren't going to get out. So I had to go to court and it was a lot of court dates and a lot of um, pain and suffering because of the fact I had to not even tell people at work what was going on because if I would have told them I felt that I was weak and that I didn't want people to feel sorry for me. I just wanted to be strong because that's who I am. You know, I'm a Wagner. You don't show your emotions. You, you suck it up, you know, and you be strong and, and I couldn't, you know, I, there's so many times I wanted to cry. There's so many times I wanted to beat the living shit out of them, but I couldn't. Going back to court also brought me back to a time I had to go back to court when I was in my 20s when I was sexually assaulted on Camp Pendleton. So going back to court last year brought me back to a place I didn't want to be. And that's flashbacks of my sexual assault. He became a major stalker. He started to go on all my basically web pages, text messages. I couldn't figure out why my text messages were all disappearing. I would see like Richard and then, you know, write him and then the next thing you know, it was gone. And then I'd write Teresa and then all my pictures and stuff that I sent her would go be disappear. And then Chris and then Dan and you know, they're like, did you get this text? No, I didn't. I would, I would freak out at work, freak out like going, what is wrong with my phone? You know, and taking it into Apple a couple times, like there's nothing wrong with your phone. You know, you are getting messages. And I was like, oh my goodness. And we turn it, reset it. I lost photos. I lost so many things on my phone. And then I would get these weird um, photos of myself. And I was like, going, what the fuck? You know, what is being on on hormones and now being on, you know, just one antidepressant of everything that's happening right now, being on quarantine, has brought me to tears a couple times, I'm not going to lie. And I don't mind being home and, you know, going for walks now. Learning how to deal with stress and s stressful situations. Like in 2013, I had a miscarriage. In 2014, my step grandmother Judy took I her also life. Lost my grandfather. 2016, I had a blockage. 2017, 2016 found two lumps in my right breast. Still waiting on results. They haven't grown. 2017, I had feet surgery. I was out for six months of work. 2016, full blown depression. 2018, the only reason why I'm making this right video is sort of to confess my sins because I feel that if I would have just broke things off with Matt completely, I mean, completely, um, he wanted to be a, my baby's father. I mean, he, we both got it and. We did sign papers, but in a way, I couldn't see myself with him like that. You know, it was just weird. And the reason why I say sign papers is because I wanted to make sure my butt was cleared, that he didn't want any responsibility, and he wasn't going to sue me afterwards, you know. Um, because we both know we're not good for each other. We're better as friends, but we're not even good for friends. Being on, on hormones and now being on, you know, just one antidepressant because of everything that's happening right now, being on quarantine has brought me to tears a couple times, I'm not gonna lie. And I don't mind being home and, you know, going for walks now and doing things. But I, I don't know if I have a job, you know, in the future. Um, you know, I'm going back to school full time. My friend, I'm always your friend and I will always be there. So this is part two where I talk about Brian 
And the reason why Brian's a big part of this is because I was trying to heal and going through all these ups and downs and court days and I whatnot. wanted things to work with Brian, but I couldn't. I wasn't in the right place in my head. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I did a lot of thinking the last couple days because I've been reaching out to an old friend. And this friend's been ignoring me. And we were dating, I guess, last year. But there's a lot of things I don't remember because I was on a really bad medication. I reached out this week just to see if he would respond. He didn't. And it hurts. I'm not gonna lie, it really does hurt. Because I'm putting effort into trying to make things better between us. Because I know I fucked up in a way. But he did some mean things to me. And I, I need to know. And then I always think to myself, how many times can I keep hurting myself, you know? Because every time I write him, I know he's going to ignore me. I know he's not going to write me back. But I continuously keep doing it. And I know on Monday, I'm going to talk to my psychiatrist and, and see another way of going around this. Because I'm tired. I'm hurt. I'm sad because that's not the person I am now and I don't get the opportunity to show the who I am now than from the person I was back then and that's the sad part even if I don't want a relationship I just want our friendship back even if we're just pen pals you know which I would have been fine with that you know but nope he, he doesn't want anything but he doesn't say anything either so it's like okay I'm not making mixed signals, I'm just reading into this because you're not saying anything.